Hey there, if you're in the market for a Tesla Powerwall 3 or an Enphase 5P, reach out to me. I've got incredible pricing that you won't want to miss. Today, we'll compare these two solar battery giants, highlighting their pros and cons. I'll compare two Enphase 5P batteries, that's with a total capacity of 10 kilowatt hours, against one Tesla Powerwall 3 with a 13.5 kWh capacity. Both can provide full backup during a power outage. We'll look at two system sizes with 19 and 25 panels each. We'll price them out with the QCell Cupid Duo 410 watt panels and the REC 420 watt Alpha Pure Back with the Enphase 5P 10kWh or the Tesla Powerwall 3 13.5 kW. The 19 panel 7.79 kW Q cell with Enphase 5P 10kWh fully installed is 36,927 and it's 35,050 with a Powerwall 3. The 19 panel 7.98 kW REC with Enphase is 38,91 to install or 36,934 with a Powerwall 3. The 25 panel 10.25 kW Q cell with a 10 kW Enphase is 4275 and it's 38291 with the Tesla 13.5 kWh. Now you're seeing a price war this summer, but it's not going to last. So I suggest you contact me to see the numbers for your home in your particular state. You will not get this deal anywhere for long. Now, folks who are looking for financing for these systems expect high interest rates. Real rates are 9% or more. Lower rates like 4.99 or 5.99% are available, but the lender will always add points to the cost of your system and inflate the system price significantly. Comparing financing options with different interest rates is difficult. What I like to do is add up all the loan payments over time for each different loan type and choose the loan option where the totals add up to the lowest amount. Now, if your plan is to prepay the loan sometime in the future, then the amount of your loan principal becomes important. It makes more sense to go with a higher interest, but higher monthly payment loans. Because when you do decide to prepay, then your payoff would be much lower with these options. Let's get into product and specifications now. Now, the energy capacity of an end phase is 10 kilowatt hours versus a 13.5 kWh for the Powerwall 3. The 10 or 13 kWh energy capacity from either one Tesla Powerwall 3 or two end phase 5 Ps is great for powering your home's essentials. If you're planning to power your air conditioner, electric range, hot water heater, etc., you will need additional batteries and thus pay significantly higher prices. Now the Powerwall 3 has about 35% more energy capacity than the Enphase. In practical terms, that means you will have an extra hour, hour and a half of energy for your devices with the Tesla. So this is definitely a small advantage to Tesla. Let's look at power next. On continuous power, the Enphase gives you 32 amps, that's 7.68 kW, whereas the Tesla gives you 11.5 kW or 48 amps. Significant advantage. Surge power, now that's the instantaneous burst of high amperage current you need to start air conditioners and motors. That's 108 amps for the N phase and a stupendous 185 amps for the Tesla. So both these batteries have enough continuous and surge power to run everything in your home, including a single three-ton air conditioner. Tesla has boosted their power capacity as you saw, and they could even run a four ton or a five ton central air conditioner as well. The end phase cannot unless you install a soft start, but a three ton is fine. Now the Tesla Powerwall definitely has a big edge on the power front as you can see. However, there are some limitations. Running an AC using either one Tesla battery or those two end phase 5P batteries is not a particularly good idea. A single battery from Tesla or the two from Enphase has capacity to run your AC for perhaps two hours at the most before the batteries will totally deplete out. So even though your Tesla Powerwall 3 could technically run two air conditioners or larger air conditioners, you know, four or five ton, 
it will run out of energy in just half an hour if you just have one battery. That's not really a good use of your battery. With the 10, 13.5 kWh combination, you must use your extra power for emergencies. Run the AC for a bit, use the electric range for a short while, but not for extended periods. Run everything in your home, including your lights, everything else, 120 volts, that's fine. Now, n -phase has a big advantage in terms of redundancy. Each panel has got its own microinverter. The n -phase batteries have got microinverters inside them. It gives them tremendous redundancy. You will never have a complete system failure with the n -phase. You might have a couple of inverters failing, but the majority of your system will continue to run regardless. Tesla, on the other hand, has just one hybrid inverter that converts energy from the panels from DC to AC, as well as the DC energy from the battery to AC. If that hybrid inverter fails, your entire Tesla system will shut down. This is definitely advantage N phase over Tesla, single point of failure. Let's look at energy production from your solar panels. Now, the N phase systems will have a slight edge in higher panel energy production, especially if you're talking about solar panels on multiple roofs and if you have some shade on some of these panels. In case you have a simple install, no shade and one single array of panels, or at the most two, the Tesla is likely to do as well or slightly better than the Enphase. Now, since most homes in the US fall into the multi-roof and a little shade kind of category, I give Enphase a little bit of an advantage in this one. On the warranty, the end phase is a 15 year warranty, which is better than the 10 year Tesla warranty. Generator support. Currently, the Tesla doesn't have generator support, and that gives the end phase an edge, especially in a single battery install. I always advise having a small generator as a backup. This is just in case you want to top up your battery. If you've had a really long extended power outage, you know, no sunlight for a real long time makes sense to have a little bit of backup for your battery. N-phase systems also offer the choice of a full home or a partial home back backup. The Tesla solution currently is a full home only backup. Now, with a single battery, sometimes a partial home backup is preferable. Ideally, you would not like to back up your bigger 240 volt appliances. Imagine you are out and a power outage happens and it could happen that your Tesla battery starts running and powering your air conditioner while you're out and that completely depletes your battery. That's the kind of situation where you would have the battery on a separate panel with standalone loads. It helps. Now, the Tesla Powerwall 3 is a DC coupled solution. That means you can only install the Tesla Powerwall with solar panels. You do not, you cannot install the Tesla Powerwall 3 if you already have solar. The N phase solution is an AC coupled solution. So you can either get N phase with panels or you can add N phase batteries to another. If you already have solar, you can add N phase batteries there. In conclusion, both these batteries are outstanding and the right choice really depends on your setup. Tesla is great for a single or double array installation with no shade. N phase excels with multi roof and shaded installations. I hope you enjoyed this video. I look forward to seeing you on my next. Thank you.